be joined this evening by Rob with a double B, we're of Tigers of Pantan. So let's start with this double B. Why why do you spell your name like that? Very unusual. Um, uh, well, it is unusual, yes. And uh, all I can say to that is why have one B when you can have two? Well, I'm assuming it's short for Robert. Is it? Uh, origi originally christened Robert, yes. Um, yeah, got one B. Back, back, so... back, back in the dark ages, but... Um, <laughs> I just decided that um, double B was um, was more me. So double B is is um, is everywhere. It's my passport on my driving yeah. license. It's it's how I'm known. Brilliant. And why not? And why not indeed? And we are joined by Percy the Parrot, who's 23, and I'm expecting him to join in the interview soon. If I ask him a question, will he answer it? Um, he looks pretty smart. Give, 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 he is way smarter than me, that's for sure, yes. <laughs> and you're doing pretty well so far, so, <laughs> so you never know, you might. Okay, um, well, we're going to get started. Tigers of Pantang, not a new band. So I, I normally, you know, focus on on interviewing the new band. Now, you've been going okay. for a long, long time. So we're going back to the 80s. Yep. Yes. Um, are you the founding member? Um, I am. I, I, I started it all, yes. Sorry yeah, for that. Right, and you're still there, so that, that's very good. So what year did it start? Because I know it's early 80s sometime, before yeah, I was no, into the rock scene, probably. Yes, no, I, th I think I probably... My first band was a band called Trick, um, and Trick were around um, late 76, probably, to... Um, late 77 and then um i put an advert in a local newspaper up here in newcastle upon time um for a bass player um and uh we're talking days when of course there's no internet and no mobile phones and I all remember that kind of those thing days. it seems um, like a million years ago but yeah we, we we went through we lived through those days no internet we, no phones we actually absolutely did. So yeah. I, I remember the, the the phone rang um, within a few hours of me putting the advert in the new in the newspaper, um, the, the local Evening Chronicle, and um, it, my mum answered the phone and she, she she called me. She said, "This somebody on the phone for you called Richard." I said, "Oh, okay." So I went and and, and spoke to this Richard and said, "Hi." Um, he, he said, "Hi." He says, "I'm I'm 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 a bass player. I'm I'm looking, you know, to 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 do something." And I said, okay, uh, where do you live? He says, Whitley Bay. I said, all right, that's great. I live in Whitley Bay. He said, I said, whereabouts? He said, I live in such and such a street. And I said, crikey, you're only about five streets away from me. Um, he said, listen, I'm, I'm on a course that I, uh, uh, in at Newcastle um, Poly, uh, and on the course is a lad called Brian, and he plays drums. Um, do, do, we, do, do you need a drummer as well? And I said, absolutely. So I said, well, let me organise a, 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 like a local church hall um and i'll get back to you we you know and, and we'll all meet uh and that's exactly what we did and the three of us jammed um a few songs of the day uh a few covers but I, I, really i was more interested in original material and i said to to richard um aka rocky um as he was known um i, I said I've, I've you know i've got got these songs got these ideas you know, what do you think and he said great let's play them um so we learned them jammed them through played them and we were quite an unusual band back in the early days because most bands that, that kind of played the local scene um you had to be a cover band um you know for the lasses to put the handbags on the floor and, and dance around to the yeah, no, no. dance dance around the handbags you know to all right now uh, and there's nothing wrong in that um but we used to play half, half our our live set was original material as well um so we've always been um the tigers have always Taking calculated risks, shall we say, yeah. um, and, and the rest, yeah. So it sort of went mainstream. We, we went sort of a, a little bit bigger in '78. Um, writing, I was writing songs all the time. Um, Rocky was uh, uh, did wrote quite a lot of the lyrics, um, and we our original singer was called Mark Butcher. Um, who did the first twenty-five sort of shows with us around the pubs and clubs and any other albums? Because I know you've got a lot of albums. Maybe not quite twenty-five. <laughs> well, 
Well, yeah, so I, in, in, we have, yeah, but yeah, it, yeah. Uh, we've been I've been going 44 years so you know it's it's uh, I should have a few albums really you should. um and you have yeah and we have yes um so yeah that, that that was the the first sort of humble beginnings as 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 it was yeah so can you hear my dog barking now I can I can yes <laughs> I I well, I have two dogs as well but so oh. if I just turn if Maybe I just turn that around in. yeah <laughs> If they hear mine barking yet, oh, they, I think they're asleep. Well, I can see one. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that, that's little, little, I don't know whether you can see that was little Dee Dee lying on the settee there. So, where um, did the name Tigers of... Ta I can't say it. Tigers of Pantang. I was going to say Tanpang for a minute. That, that would be completely wrong. What, what, Tigers, where did your name come from? And, he, and what he, were your influences then from going back in the day? What, what you know, who did you want to be like? So, um... The, I'll just set the scene. I was sat uh, in Rocky's mum's lounge, um, and the pair of us were um, trying to think of a name for this wonderful little um, band that we had. Yeah. Um, and I suggested Achilles' heel, and he said, "Oh, he says I quite like that." He says, "What about Tigers of Pantang?" Uh, and at that point, I nearly fell off the settee. I said, that, "That's <laughs> absolute, absolutely brilliant." But where have you got that from? And he said, "Well, you know, I, I'm I'm quite an avid." science fiction fantasy science fiction reader he, he yeah. read a lot of books because uh, um, our rocky was quite quite a learned gentleman yeah. um and uh one of the authors that he was very interested in was a guy called michael moorcock who of course uh, wrote a series of books and one of them was called stonebringer i have no idea where anybody else could have got an album title from uh you know taken from a from a a book, but there you are, uh, Deep Purple. Uh, so um, uh, I said to him, where, where, how have you got the idea? And he said, um, well, the emperor um, has cliffs and you have, to, you have to pass these cliffs to get into his kingdom and the cliffs are guarded by attack tigers and they're the cliffs of Pantang. So he said, I, I've, I've just sort of put it all together uh, and, and got tigers of Pantang. And I said, I said, that's amazing. I said, well, why don't we spell the tigers with a Y instead of an I? Uh, and then that gives us a bit of individuality. Yeah. And he said, great idea. And then we asked his mum um, if uh, if she would dye us um, a white bed sheet, um, black, which she did. And we bought some yellow sticky back uh, fablon, uh, which... Um, to our, our, our younger viewers uh, and listeners is is um, like sticky back plastic, if you like. It's all going very Blue Peter-ish now, isn't it? Uh, well, <laughs> it's it's yeah, what yeah, I made yeah. earlier. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And so 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 she cut she cut the letters out for us, Tigers of Pantang, yeah. stuck them to the stuck them to this black sheet, and that was our first backdrop. I love it. That, that's fabulous. <laughs> that is fabulous. <laughs> I'm so glad I asked that because you know I think I think I bet there's loads of people that have no idea and would just you know like to know and, and now they know hopefully if they're watching this. Um, right. So musical style. So I mentioned your influences. So who would you say you were trying to emulate or want so, to sound like? Or R Rocky and I went to just about every concert going um it, it, you know in in the in the late 70s um at the mayfair the castle mayfair which is um quite infamous although unfortunately not there anymore um the city hall uh newcastle university the polytechnic you name it if if, if it was anything to do with rock music you know we we were there yeah. um and, and we, we were both really on really on the same page, uh, musically wise. Um, so um, we, we were um, regular attendees at Rush concerts, um, at ACDC concerts, uh, Uriah Heep. Um, I went to see Black Sabbath with Van Halen opening up for them in 78. Um, but, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm a little bit older. So I, that must have been quite, quite a concert. It Can was... Absolutely amazing, and uh, in fact, um, I was stood at the very back with um, with our manager Tom, who actually still manages the band to this day. Oh, yeah. um, 
for his sins. So he's he's managed me for the last forty four years. So that, I mean, that guy needs a medal anyway. <laughs> um, so <laughs> the pair of us have stood there, um, and Black Sabbath had just come on, um, and along the back wall, uh, this 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 kind of you know lad who's not much older than me um, appears. Um, and uh, he, he stands next to me, uh, and I turn to him, um, and it was Eddie Van Halen. And uh, uh, he, I, I said, well, I said, oh, I said, oh, I said, I, 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 <laughs> I've just seen your twin brother on there. Um, so he, you know, we, we, we had a, a little bit of a, a conversation. I said, to be quite honest with you, um, you know, uh, you absolutely, you know, destroyed. Uh, the city hall, um, you know, the, the past 40 minutes that you played, you were absolutely tremendous. Never seen you before, don't know who you are, um, you know, but um, you're going to be absolutely huge. And he went, Oh man, you really think so? I said, Absolutely, absolutely. So he shook my hand, he said, My name's Edward. And I said, Okay, great, my name's Rob. And, and off he went, and that was it. <laughs> oh, what a lovely story. In fact, Rob, you are a natural born storyteller, I have to say. I feel like I can just sit back and just listen to you. I don't even need to ask anything. Just, just tell me the whole story from the beginning, which is wonderful. Um, so thank you for that. That was a lovely thing to share. Um, so you have got a couple of new members. Are they still considered new? You've got Francesco and Hugh. We have. Um, are they still yeah. considered new? Um, new well, what, what, what what are we in? About we're about eleven shows in now, I suppose, um, and an awful lot more shows to come. So it's um, new for a band that's been together as long as yours. Well, yeah, I, I guess so. Um, do you know the lovely thing about um, the pair of them is it feels like they've been in the band forever. Well, that is um, nice. Yes. Francesco, um, Francesco joined the band. Uh, oh, Percy's looking at you. He's looking at you like little... my dog looks at me. Sorry, <laughs> that's just adorable. He, Let's carry on. He, he, want, he, he wants me. He wants. He wants me to stroke him. He wants to stroke oh, some. Him. There, we there we are. Right. Oh. Um, he's. Uh, has he got? You know, he's, yeah. So he. Um, I wouldn't care when, when I do that. He looks at me as if to say. Where's the budgie? Uh, who, who are you talking to? Because he, he certainly doesn't consider himself as a parrot. He's he's oh. certainly on, on a higher human level than I am. Oh yeah. Because uh, they they have the intelligence intelligence of a four or five year old. Um. So he, he's actually cleverer than I am, aren't you? Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> um. So Francesco, when he joined the band, he was in the band, um, uh, over a year, and I'd never met him. Uh, he he was he lived um, he was living uh, with his partner in near Dusseldorf, um, and just two three months ago her contract ended um, in the job she was doing, and uh, because of you know our dreadful economic climate it's not just here of course it's it, it's across the world her contract wasn't renewed so they found themselves um, having to having to relocate back to their home country which is Sardinia. Um, so uh, they, they now they're now back in Sardinia. Um, but I'd written um, I'd written a single with uh, Francesco and an entire album, which we're busy recording at the moment. Had never met him in the in the flesh, um, and the first show, um, sort of after the our dreadful two and a bit years of lockdown, was um, a headlining festival uh, in Madrid in May. Uh, and I met him um, about 48 hours before we walked on stage for oh, the first wow. time ever. Uh, we had two rehearsals, um, which were peppered with a little bit of tragedy because as when Jack arrived uh, on the Friday morning, first day of rehearsals, um, as he sat down um, on the street, very sunny street in Madrid, um, outside the hotel, um, he had his bag stolen. Uh, which was his passport, money, his driving license, his car keys, his house keys. Um, so he didn't make the re our rehearsal was supposed to be two o'clock in the afternoon. He didn't arrive by the time he, you know, he'd been to the police station. He didn't get there till six. So we had a quick run through, quick run through the set. Um, the next morning, uh, the day of the show, we had a rehearsal. Uh, he had to go to the airport and make sure that he could get home from Spain to Italy without a passport. 
uh, and just a police letter. Um, so he joined us for an hour's, re an hour's rehearsal uh, on the Saturday. Off we went and, and did the show. Um, and, you know, it, thanks to Hugh and Francesco's amazing um, homework <laughs> um, and, um, you know, uh, a study of the songs, um, it, it all just came together like a, as, as if they'd been in the band for, for uh, you know, years ra rather than moments. Um, and it's just continued that way. Yeah. It's just continued. Um, and the songs which I sent, all, all, all the, the, the bulk of the album which I sent to Francesco, he's kind of um, looked at the songs, stripped them down, rebuilt them, um, and taking them really, uh, you know, I tip my hat off to him. He's taken them to the next level. The, I always look, um, if I can indulge your viewers, I always look at Band's career as a staircase. Mm. So, so bear with me here. And, and you know, I, I'm not going corny like, a, you know, a stairway to heaven or anything silly like that. I look, at, I look at a band's career as a staircase. So every time you release an album, you move up a stair. Okay? Who wants to move down a stair? Because that means that... that you, yeah, it's a ladder. Yeah, and when you go down, that that means that 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 your 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 albums, people are considering you know your new product not as good as 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 the last one. So you're always you're always aspiring to move up a stair, but you can never get to the top of the ladder or the staircase because when you get to the top of something, that you know when you when you get to the summit, where do you go? You've got nowhere to go. So you're kind of saying, well, this is this is our career done. We've got nothing else to offer. So. As as a progression, you want to go up a stair every time you release an album, and I really feel feel this new album. We've got up two stairs. It's ah it, right. Well, I'm coming it, to that. I'm coming to this yeah. new album. I'm coming to that. I'm, I'm sure you am. It, it, I'm sure you are. It's it, it is. Um, I, I, I feel it's absolutely tremendous. Okay, we've so we'll, got. We'll, we'll go on to this now. Okay, so yeah. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll show you. Latest <laughs> release. So a new heartbeat. That was your EP that you recorded during lockdown. So that's got four tracks yes. on it. But yep. you also use the lockdown period to write a new album. So this Put is due to be released via Mighty Music around March time next year. So are you still on track for March? And do you have any more information for us about the album? Do we, do we know what it's called yet? Um, I know what it's called, but um, nobody else does. What? Well, obviously the, obviously the band does. But um, no, Does no. Does Percy know? Does Percy um, know what it's called? No, I don't think I've told him. I don't think. Right, I've you told him you tell Percy, and I'll just not listen. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just have my water. <laughs> um, no, it doesn't quite work like that. No. Um, Never does. Uh, Never. Yeah. So um, the the artwork has been done. It is. Absolutely tremendous! It it there is a tiger in the artwork. I can tell you that, as of course there is in all our albums, because that's our kind of thing. Um, it's slightly different. Um, it has a slightly different look to it, a slightly different feel to it. Um, the artwork I'm talking about. The material is tigers. Um, we have. Um, one of the one of the tracks we've we have a grand piano on there. Uh, it's kind of a a, a rock ballad. Um, we do the occasional ballads. We're not we're not known for it, but uh, this is oh, Jack has written an amazing melody to it, um, and I'm, I'm I can't wait for next March for people to hear it. To be honest with you, because it's um, it's quite stupendous. If if you kind of think of the actor from from the cage in eighty yeah. two, um, it, it's it, it, you know it's kind of you know the the, the the next stage on. So yeah, that's all I'm really going to say. But there's some rockers on there. There's some fast ones. There's there's you know there's everything on there. Everything. And when will we be able to find out the rest of the details about it? Sort of the exact release date. And I mean, it's a long way off still at the moment, isn't it, March? Um, well, you, you you think that, but it's it's pff, crikey! It it you know our 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 next live show is October. And that's only four weeks away. So, <laughs> uh, you know, um, we and deliver the album. Are already stocking Christmas cakes. Well, yeah, absolutely. Gosh, absolutely. 
we're, we're contracted to deliver the album to um, to Target, uh, Mighty Music, uh, on the 30th of September. Uh, that is all on track. Uh, there are eight tracks recorded, finished, and mixed, and mastered. Uh, we're, we're just starting on uh, Sunday. We'll be starting on the last four tracks. Uh, so there'll be a 10-track album. There'll be a bonus track for Japan and a bonus track for America, and they will be different tracks. Oh, uh, it, it will be, be released in on vinyl, of course. Um, and uh, um, we're just going to have a, um, a a messenger. I don't know what 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 the meeting is in, in a messenger room. Is it is it Teams? Is it I don't know what it is. No, we're yeah, just, about have one, oh. just about just about have just about to have one of those to discuss the booklet yes, and, okay. and, and 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 how we want that to look. So we had, we had some photographs done before our show in Newcastle last Friday um, by a great photographer called Steve Christie. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's all looking really good. So um, our agent and management team are busy, um, you know, uh, booking his shows left, right and centre now. So Yeah, I mean, you just um, played Stone Dead. That was last weekend. <laughs> Tremendous. Absolutely loved it. Um, a, a huge shout out to uh, Chris Sumby, one of the directors. Um, do you know, he started off five years ago uh, in, in, in the same field with about 1,200 people there, hoping, you know, a, a dream would come true for him. Uh, he's, it's now 4,000 sold out. It'll be bigger again next year and it'll just keep growing. I've played a lot bigger festivals with a lot worse organisation. I have to tell you, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely amazing. If I know that the the early bird tickets are all sold out already for next year, yeah. if you want to go, and, if you want to go and see, you know, it's quite family orientated. Um, it's just great. It really, really is. You, you just cannot fault it. Yeah, I mean, it's family actually, orientated as long as you don't mind your kids hearing a lot of f words. You're okay I otherwise. Well, I didn't hear that many, to, to, to be fair. I really didn't. And in our signing tent, yeah. um, there, there were quite a lot of kids came in. Yeah. Um, but just as we came off stage um, and, and they were doing the changeover, they had, they, they, uh, had a flyby um, with a Lancaster bomber. Oh, yeah. Um, yes, they do this yeah. every year. Which just about um, scraped its wheels off, off the festival um, stage ceiling. Absolutely <laughs> tremendous, and that really caught everybody's attention. Yeah, it, it always does. It's fabulous to see. And now, so you you're going to be doing an extensive tour across the UK as well as Scotland, Europe, and supporting the release of your new album. So you've already really, you've already announced some of the dates. So when is the tour due to start, and sort of how long is it going to be exactly? Um, dates keep <laughs> dates keep keep getting added all the time. The, 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 this year's set in stone, so we've got um, in four weeks' time, four weekends' time exactly. Uh, we're out with Saxon in Germany, okay. uh, playing a big big festival called Keep It True, um, and then we have there's three UK shows. A day off, and then we're off. We're off to Rome, uh, Milan, and Bologna, I think. Um, and then uh, there's a few days off, and then there's some more UK dates. Uh, and then I think there's we have a travel day, and then we're off to Europe for eight shows. First oh, one yeah, starting in Paris. Nice. First one starting, yeah. First one starting in Paris, which is already sold out. Um, so, wow. yeah, it's it's good. Um, we we never play in December. Um, that's kind of family time. Uh, and then uh, two weeks two weeks into January, we're off to Poland um, to do some shows, and so it goes on. Um, we're playing a lovely festival in in June next year. It's just being confirmed down in uh, Murcia. Um, I used to live there. I studied at the university you? there when I was yeah when I was a student. I was a language student. All oh, right, okay. We'll play, yeah, play there Murcia. Yeah, there's going on there when I was there. I'll tell you that. I mean, you know. Well, there is next year because we're playing with Deep Purple. Yeah, so, there is next uh, year. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> That's so funny. Wow, Murcia. Oh, wonderful. Oh, okay. Um, so, you won a Music Industry Award last year. So we did. Was HRH. It was New Wave of British Heavy Metal Award. Are you considered New Wave of British Heavy Metal? Because I would have thought you were pre-New Wave. Um, 
Yeah, I think we're. I think I think we probably are new wave of British heavy metal. Yes. He, he, he wants. He wants to come and have a look now. Oh, you're a beautiful person. <laughs> Hello, gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to start talking him like I do to my dog. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, well, I think we were definitely part of that movement. In, in yeah. fact, I, I, I think we were considered one of the one of the big four, as it were. There was Iron Maiden, there was Def Leppard, there was Saxon, and there was ourselves, and and, and that's who Jeff Barton uh, wrote about, really. Yeah. Um, so you know, we we, we kicked off um, uh, you know neat music up here in in Newcastle. We, we had a, our single our, "Don't Touch Me There" was. Um, the first single, which Neat put out um, as as a rock label, that there were we were Neato three. There was Neato one, which I think was a, a football anthem song, and Neato two, which was a a pop song. So we kind of gave that small record company their identity, and then of course they went on to record Raven and Venom and uh, Dead Ringer and um, uh, a Gosh. Uh, Fist and um, White Spirit and, and all sorts of people. Um, I've got a question about one of your singles, actually. Um, yeah. From, from 85, going back a long way now, Protection. Now, I was listening to this one before. What, was it written for anything? Like, because when I hear it, I think it, it would be perfect to accompany a, an advert for condoms, you know? <laughs> and I, I'd be amazed if it wasn't used for that. Was, was it, well, it, yeah, qu it quite possibly. Be. That, that, that was a, It would be. It, well, it, would, it would be that that was a that, that was a um, a version of the band that I wasn't actually involved in. That was oh. um, that 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 was no, that's fine, that's fine. That, that <laughs> was that um that was that was uh, Brian um the drummer and uh, yeah. John Deverell. Okay. Um, but I, 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 unfortunately, I don't think that's they, they recorded two albums. Um, yeah. But it, 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 it's it lasted I think two years, ninety uh, ninety five to ninety seven, I think. No, eight eight. Sorry, eighty five to eighty seven. Um, and then uh, uh, the, the, the the cloak came down um, f for about eleven years, I think. Uh, and then ninety nine, um, I, I got a call. Um, yeah. I'd actually left the, at, at 87 I actually f for various reasons I actually left the music business I was just quite cheesed off with everything um, and and sold everything um, I thought right that's it um, you know oh hello um, well that that's certainly got Percy's attention <laughs> um, I think that's uh, what you, to so, me as well he's yeah he's spending a lot of time there looking <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I sold everything and and just thought, you know, but that that that's it for me. And the bloody phone rang in '99, um, saying we're doing a, a twenty year reunion of the Tigers uh, at Wacken, uh, you know, near Hamburg. Oh yeah. Um, uh, are, are you in? And you know, it took me a nanosecond to think about it, and I said, Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> um, <laughs> Not and, too and much persuasion then. then. Yeah, no, not really. Um, and then, you know, uh, five minutes later, I was in the car on the way to the, you know, the local music store to buy two guitars and some amps. And um, yeah, it's uh, off we went again. And when when we did that and we came home, I just thought to myself, I've, I've got to got to put the Tigers back together in in some shape or form. And you know, and here we are, twenty two years later. Wow, yeah, yeah, and you not look back since. Absolutely it not. Be. No. It was meant to be. Um, I just lastly, I mean, it's been absolutely fascinating talking to you. I feel like if we we could just sort of talk, talk on and on and on, but sadly we only have a few minutes left. So I just want to touch on a blog that you write in Powerplay magazine. I do. Yes, yeah, so it's I, a monthly I, like a column, a monthly column. I mean, it is. It's called, it's called exactly blogs what it is. nowadays, aren't they? So, um, so how did that come about? So what do you write about? So it's called Tiger Man Tales. Um, okay. And um, it's name. just, like that, yes. it's thank you. It's just fu funny stories from you know fr from from the road, and of course that that the, the happening, you know, the, the, the happening now, um, yeah. uh, you know. So it's from you know it's from 1980 uh, right right the way up to now. Um, so uh, it's it yeah it's a monthly column. Um, it came about, I was sat with um, Michael Anderson, the CEO, um, 
of Target Records. They'd, they, they, uh, he'd come across with his wife. Um, we were having a, 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 a business meeting um, in Newcastle and talking about all, all sorts of stuff and, you know, uh, drinking and generally enjoying ourselves. And he said, and, and I started telling a story, as I do, you know, um, um, uh, and, and he said, listen, he says, why don't you, why don't you write these down, you know, uh, and, uh, and, you know, do a book or something? And I said, well, uh, yeah, probably would. He said, why don't you do them for a music magazine? And I, I can put you in touch with one. And this is a magazine which Michael regularly advertises with and has yeah. reviews in. And of course, it's it's Power Play, which um, is a great magazine. You you, you buy it. You, you can only get it, I think, in W. H. Smiths or online. Um, and um, uh, it, it, yeah, it's that it, I started writing just a little over four years ago. Well, no, um, so so true. I can absolutely see why why they've given you your, a blog there because I'm sure <laughs> you just must have so many interesting things to talk about. So I'm going well, to. Uh, I, I just I just must tell you quickly. You you were yeah. talking about Stone Dead before. I talking about Don't Stone yeah. Stone Dead before. So I, I've I haven't written this tale, but I, but but I will. So we're, we're driving down. We. we, we we didn't need to take a van because we didn't need our our, our tigers backline. We just took our guitars and and, and our, our our amp heads. Uh, so so we're, we're traveling in two cars. Uh, uh, Hugh and I uh, and um, our drum tech were were in Hugh's car. So we're driving down. Um, we're a little bit early. We went to Morrison's for breakfast because um, we can, and. Um, when we when we got to the festival site, we're, we're driving along the road, um, and the, this woman was on the gate, and we said, "Oh, where the where the tigers?" Um, and, and she and she looked. She gave us a strange look and said, "Okay, uh, just drive down there and park up, and you'll be able to get your accreditation." And, I, and we said, oh, "Okay, right, great." So we drove down, parked up, in we go to get our accreditation. And who are you? Uh, well, where the tigers? Uh, this, this, the rest of the band is following. And she said, the rest of the band? And we said, yeah, the rest of the band. She said, this is the, this is the Koi Carp exhibition. And I, I, said, I said, what? She said, this is the Koi Carp exhibition. And I said, right, okay, so we're not really in the right place. And she said, not unless you've got Koi Carps, no. <laughs> and I said, I said, well, I've got some at home, but I haven't brought them. And so we got back back in the car, turned round, drove out, and the same woman's on the gate. Oh. So the woman said, um, I, I, "I thought you were, uh, um, you know, uh, exhibiting koi carps. You know, you, you had some in the back of the car." And we said, "No, we're in a band. We're playing Stone Dead." And she went, "Oh, the Rock Festival. Oh, that's down the road." Uh, well, you found it in the end, so, though, didn't you? <laughs> so oh, well, so we found it in the end, yeah. But I mean, really, the koi carp they look quite interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Next year you'll have to go to that then. <laughs> they yes, do it every year, don't know. <laughs> look, I'm going to have to leave it there because we, we've literally got one minute left before Zoom decides that we're they're going to throw us out. We've, but okay. it's been absolutely fantastic to speak to you and to see the beautiful Percy. Um, and I wish you all the very best with the tour with the new album and everything you've got going on. It sounds like you've got a huge amount going on. So all the best for that. And, you know, I'm sure I will catch you in person soon. All being well. Absolutely. Absolutely. If, if, there's a show near, if there's a show nearby you, make sure that you you you, you, you give us a... I will. I'll be contacting a, you for yeah. tickets. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> okay, not a problem. See you very right, soon. Thank you. To you and to Percy and to the rest of the band. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.